Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venetia and this is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast. Today I'm very excited to record this video that is not a normal podcast episode but something that has been a long time in the making and as you can guess it is a ultimate guide to Ravelry and it's going to be a compilation of my best tips and tricks to make the most use out of this wonderful platform, how to use it to help make your knitting more efficient, streamlined, how to find hidden features, etc, etc. I've been using Ravelry for basically as long as I was knitting and over the years I've learned quite a few things to make the experience just more enjoyable and better for me and I thought it'd be selfish not to share all of that with you. So if you're the kind of person that only uses Ravelry to buy patterns and you're too intimidated by the sheer volume of, of features and maybe sometimes the uncomfortable layout of how things are placed on the website, then this video is for you. If you have any tips that I don't mention in this, uh, share them with other people in the comments down below. If there's anything that I don't mention that you wish I had, then please let me know, ask a question down, and then I will definitely make a part two or even three because there's so much to talk about with Ravelry. I could go on for, for ages. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that not everyone wants to or can use Ravelry. There was a bit of a controversy a few years back that I'm not going to go into details here because it's not the point, but just so you know, um, some people were complaining that the new design of the website was bringing migraines or epilepsy triggers um, and then they fed that back to the creators of Ravelry, which didn't really take on that feedback. So uh, as a result, some people decided to not use Ravelry or just like couldn't. So uh, I'm sorry if that's the case, if, if then this video isn't for you, obviously. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that. And before we start, uh, I would also like to mention that if you want to befriend me on Ravelry, then my username is the Woolly Worker, same as here on YouTube, and my links are always down below. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at the Woolly Worker. Okay, I think we're back. So where was I? Uh, yeah, I think Ravelry is a wonderful mix of a database and also social media platform. You can buy patterns there, discover new designers, connect with other knitters, and I think for me most importantly is just keeping track of my projects, their statistics and features, and my stash, and organize my stash, and link them together, so I'll show you all how to do that. The point of this video is to be kind of like opening your eyes to the features that there are and also give a demonstration, but it's not a tutorial per se, otherwise it would just be way too long, so I will be recording my screen and sharing it with you bear with me because I'm still a bit unsure about this kind of format and, and whether it's the best way to showcase all of that. So I will be sharing my screen and demonstrating what I'm doing on the screen. And then if you're interested in learning more about them, you can do a bit of research on your own as well. So I hope that that will work out. And if this video becomes too long, then I will make sure to split it in half uh, because I, I do want to go into enough depth into those techniques. And then the last thing I will mention is that if you're wondering what I'm wearing, I am wearing the Palm Tea by Linet in Drops Bell in Petrol. But I've talked about this in the podcast, so if you want more information about this t-shirt, then feel free to go watch that previous video. So I think that's everything for the introduction. I will just go straight into the tips and I've kind of organized them in the sense that ideally you'd get those first ones under your belt before you move on to the future ones because some of them are building on top of each other, if that makes sense. So okay, I will now try and attempt to share my screen and I'm really sorry if you can hear the mouse clicks, there's just no other way around this. Okay, so I think that I am recording my screen, yes. Um, I will go on to Ravelry then, and as you can see, this is now my um, notebook, as they call it. Uh, here is my profile in the top corner on the right. You can see uh, the groups that I'm part of, a little description about me, my social media links, my YouTube videos, my finished objects, any patterns I have on sale, and then here's my uh, statistics. As you can see, I have a lot of projects, a lot of stash yarns, <laughs> a really big amount of favorites. But what I want to talk about first is the stash. Now, um, you obviously don't, it, it can seem like a bit of a task to go and record all the stash that you already have. The only thing I can recommend is that from now on, what you do is that you record your stash and then whenever you have a bit of time, you can go back and, and record the ones that you already have. 
but as you can see I have pretty much uh, recorded all my stash and I try and put a photo for everything that I own. Uh, the things here I just not really received them yet so I haven't put a photo. Uh, what's interesting is the tabs here at the top, this is the yarn stash. There's fiber stash which I don't really have any because I don't spin. Used up which is yarn that I just don't have any of like left. Uh, so those things I've used so much of that there's not even a bit of grams left over. Here's a very very interesting tab which is will trade or sell. So this is the yarn that I currently have up there. If you wanted to go have a look you're more than welcome to. And what I do is that I uh, put a photo up and I put the price, so here £29 and UK postage, just so that people know in advance then they can message me about it if they want. And then lastly here's the stash that I have traded or sold or gifted. So I put it there um, and it's, it's quite easy to, to change that if you go here on the stash you click on one and then you can do here. If you click on stash or in stash, you can change it to go to all used up, for example, and then save changes and it will do that. And here when I'm on my Jemison uh, of Shetland Spin Rift, it shows me all the other shades that I have in stash and the quantities of it, which is very, very helpful. What I like to do when I have stash yarn is to complete as many as these as I possibly can. So what I do is I put the colorway. Usually if you start typing it, for example here if I start typing Titanic, it will come up. And here I, I really like to put the color that it is. I try to keep it simple. I usually don't do like blue purples or blue greens. I just say blue. And you can also put color attributes such as like marled, semi-solid, tonals. But I feel like I myself still don't really know fully what those mean and the differences, so I try not to get bogged down and be inconsistent, so I just don't do it. Then if the yarn already exists in the database, it will fill those stats for you, like the meters and the grams. I say that I have one skein, I said where I purchased it, and then the purchase date, and then the total that I paid for it. And if I paid it, if I purchased it on sale, I put the sale like price that I, I had it. You can put dialots in, you can put tags. I put tags usually for hand dyed yarn, and I'll show you in a minute why. And store then, that is just for your personal organization, you could say in like craft room, bedroom, under bed, blah, blah, blah. And some notes if you want. Um, so this is what I like to do. And I'll show you here the tag of hand dyed, which is really, really helpful. So here's some hand dyed that I added to the stash. As you can see, I added the tag hand dyed. And if I click on that, then Ravelry will show me all my hand-dyed yarn. Ta-da! How great is this? I think this is really, really fun and an amazing way to, to really see it at a glance. Um, what you can do as well is you can earmark the yarn because it's going to be used for a certain project. So for instance, I have this yarn that I want to use for the tumble tea. So as you can see, it's linked to the tumble tee, and I can just click on that and it will show me the pattern. And the way that you do that is that if you go in your queue, so here's my queue, if you do edit once it is in your queue, and you can see here you can uh, assign some yarn. So for example, if I was going to do a contrast hem or something, you, you click on add stash yarn, you search in your stash, so maybe I'm using some Isiger, let's say. Um, Search, well I don't have any Isiger fingering, so that's fine. Let's do uh, Knitting for Olive. Uh, and then, yeah, what if I was gonna use Dusty Olive? And then I would say Use. And then now they both appear there. And then if I save this, Save Changes, you can see that they both appear, Knitting for Olive Merino and Zakami Corridale. And I found that super, super useful to basically link things in my queue and also in my stash. I usually use both of those tabs very interchangeably. The other thing that I mentioned was really fun to do is if you then do advanced search here on the left column, you can see you can organize them by fingering or sport or DK. So if I look at all my DK yarn, I can see it here. That's really helpful. Uh, and then if I don't want to see that filter anymore, I just click on the little cross here. I don't want DK anymore. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to see colors. So you can see here all the colors that I have and get ready for something really, really fun. I would like to see all my blue yarn. As you can see, I think it is the one that I have the most of. Yeah, it is. So I click on blue and look at this beauty. This is my happy place. It's showing me all the blue yarn in my stash. That's just, that's just amazing. There's 
no way that I would go and manually pick all of those blue skies from my like cupboard, but I get to see it all at a glance on Ravelry. So that's, that's perfect. And then if I wanted to, I could do not only the blues, but also the um, DK blues, and then that's it. Or I could also want just the DK and the worsted, because I was going to play around with gauge, etc, etc. So you can put as many filters as you want. Another filter that's really helpful to do in your own stash will be the metrage or grams. So for example, if I was doing a scrappy project and I knew that I wanted, let's say, um, at least 200 meters, if I click here on meterage, I can put in 200 meters as a minimum, and then maybe I don't want to crack into like a sweater quantity that I had, so I'm going to put a maximum of 400 meters. And then there we go, Ravelry just here shows me all the yarn I have in stash that is between 200 and 400 meters. Then I can again like refine it by just clicking on the fingering yarn. And here it's going to show me that. So if I click on this blue tit, for example, um, as you can see, I had already cracked into the skine, which was 400 meter, but I only have 240 left. So, and you can see what other project I had used this in. So that's why I, I find it's so worth taking the time to link all of your things together between the queue, the stash, and the project page. Because if you click on the, Ravel the library socks, you can see here, I've weighted, like, I've weighed how much grams I had used of that yarn, and so that it reflects that change in the stash. So I'd really encourage you to play around with that. Like I said, it may be overwhelming if you have so much stash right now to go through, but take it a little bit at a time. You know, the, the, the best time to, to have started this was when you started knitting, and then the second best time to start this is right now. So this is your sign, start inputting your stash on Ravelry. Everything that I'm going to talk about later might hinge on this, um, or maybe not everything, but quite a lot. Uh, and then the other thing that you can do lastly on the stash, uh, it, which I, I do uh, on the first of the month every month, is if I do export, and um, this will basically prompt you, yeah, here, it, do you want to download your stash? And I will rename it with like the first of the month and then it shows you everything on a big Excel spreadsheet But I will probably make a video on that later where you can really play around with the, the graph and the formulas features of Excel So that's it for the stash. Uh, let's talk about searching for patterns. This is something that people have requested. So uh, That was all my personal things. So project queue stash, etc. Now I'm going to ask you to go to the general Ravelry features here, so Pattern, Yarn, Community. Pattern and Yarn are like the big databases that Ravelry has. So if I click on Pattern, and let's just say click on Hot Right Now, and this is like the main page of the patterns. You can see what patterns are trending right now, that's based on clicks, adding to favorites, adding to queue, etc. So let's say that um, I've just seen in my stash, I've organized it by um, DK, let's say, and I have this DK here, Penelope, I already know what I want to do with it, but it tells me that I have like basically 800 meters, so what I do here is that I want to make something that is clothing, so I'm going to apply filters basically to the, the database, because right now it's offering me, you know, over a million patterns, I want to refine that. So I want to make a clothing uh, I don't really mind if it's a sweater or a top, so I'll just put both sweater and top. And you can see here that the filter is showing you sweaters or tops, which is what you want. If you said sweaters and tops, then it would need to fulfill both criteria. So I want to find a sweater or a top, and then I don't mind if the pattern is free or if I can purchase it online, but if you're on a budget, you can tick free and then only free patterns will appear. Um, I could be searching for a pattern that's already in my library, for example, so those are the patterns that I own, uh, and I'll show you in a bit why that could be helpful. Uh, or it could also be in my queue or in the projects that I've already made, so yeah. So the other thing that I could filter by is kind of like design elements or constructions. For example, you could say that you want it to be top-down. So we can do that here. The problem with that is that sometimes designers might not be putting those tags, so if you're telling Ravelry that you're looking for that tag and it doesn't come up, it might just be because the designer didn't put it in, not that it doesn't exist. Single strand, two strands, age, size, or fit. What I really want is, again, to go to the meterage. So here it is, meterage, and it already has some predetermined filters, 
for example, 600 to 750. Like I said, I have 800 meters, so I'm just going to refine that with clicking on Customize, Enter a Range. Let's say that I, I do want to use most of it, so I will say 400 to 800, and I'm going to give myself a bit of leeway, 850, just in case I could crop it, for example, and play like Yarn Chicken. So I've just done that, and as you can see, it, it heavily um, reduced. Um, so yeah, so now if I click on... Oh, did I click DK? I don't think I clicked on DK. Yeah, let's click on DK because my yarn was a DK. So if I clicked on this top, the Rosalind top, uh, and I looked at this the yardage range, that one ranges from basically 500 to 1000 meters. And because I'm usually a size like 2 or 3 with Sari Nordland, I can see here that the yarn is asking me for basically 500 to 550 meters. So there we go, I could make that pattern with that yarn. And I already have the pattern in my library because we had that filter on. But if I remove that filter of it's already in my library, then it will show me patterns that I don't own that fulfill all of those criteria, which is really great. So I could make the tall city, I could make the white mountains light. Um, and the reason I usually go on like hot right now because that's how I prefer my things to be. But if you wanted, you could also organize them by most popular. So this will be, you know, very, very trendy, popular patterns that have been done a lot. Or you could do most projects. So the ranunculus usually comes up really high on those. Um, the love note, I guess, as well, because it usually just uses one sky. So uh, most projects, or you could do most favorites, most cued. So you can play around with that. Like I said, I usually do hot right now just because it's easier for me um, and because I follow trends, let's just be honest. Another way that I search for patterns based on stash that I already own is kind of backwards. So what I'll do is I will go on my stash and then go from there. So I will click on the yarn or even click on the color to be more precise. And here I will see all the projects that people have done with that color. So here I can see it's on stash by default. So this is showing me other people who have stashed this yarn in this color. But if I click here on projects, then it will show me people who have done projects with this. And as you can see, not that many, but uh, it's a really good way to see yarns in action and see the true colors because this color is kind of like the iciest of the blues, like an off-white that is kind of going on gray and blue. It's really beautiful. So I can see this person's photos in natural light and it gives me a good idea of what the yarn will, will be um, in, in those different colors, uh, I mean lights. So they made this jacket, this person made this jacket. Uh, they all had six kinds, which is what I have. Yeah, so if I wanted to, I could make that jacket. If I didn't care about the color that people have made things in, then like I said, I just click on the yarn, the blue link. This is the Rorum Natura Penelope. And if you go here on projects, you can see there's like 1200 projects made with that. And again, just to give me more options, I click on advanced search because this view is um, most recent. Basically, as soon as someone finishes a project, it'll come here at the top of the pile. And you can search things from here, but I just click on advanced. And I can see all of these at a glance. So usually what I do is I sort them by most favorites because either they did a really good job with it or they had really helpful notes, you know, so this person here did the Foxberry Summer Tea in Orja, which is really pretty. They didn't say how much yarn they used though. Another filter that you can put on or like view would be most helpful. Now, this is really, really a new feature that I, I wasn't aware of, but recently have looked into. How do you say that a project is helpful? Well, if you click on that, someone did a test net for the home camisole. They used four skeins. That was what I had done with my home camisole. I had used four skeins of that yarn. Uh, and it was helpful for, for this person to have said all of this. So what you can do is you can click here at the bottom. You can see that this project has been viewed 338 times, helped two people. And Ravelry is asking me, are those notes helpful? Well, I think that they were. So I'm going to click on yes. You can even highlight what part you found helpful. You know, so for example, the only thing I would change later is I wouldn't add stitches at the underarm. So I'm going to highlight that. 
and it says here now that it's helped three people. So if I go in my projects, and you can go on my home camisole, you can see the projects that I had favorited and the projects that I had found helpful. So this project, I gave it a heart, and this project I just said was helpful. And if you click on it, you get hyperlinked to here, which is really helpful while you're making your project on Ravelry. You can go back to those projects that you had earmarked as being helpful, and you can read all of their really helpful notes. How great is that? Um, so again, let's say that I want to use this yarn and I go on the project and I know that I don't want an accessory. So again, I'm going to just put clothing and again, I don't have more than 800 meters. So I'm going to be picking on those ones that use basically from 400 to 900. And you can see mine comes up. And yeah, so then this gives me, at a glance, inspiration for what I could do with my stash in the quantities that I have. And this can actually be more helpful than the other way that I showed you, because those are organized with the meterage in terms of the range of sizes that the pattern designer offers. So if uh, the size extra small and then the size three extra large, that will have a very vast difference in how much meterage it requires. And this will account for, for that. So this will come up in, in the filter for a lot of yarn and for a little yarn, because those are patterns. However, these here are projects by people who have knitted them. So if you see someone that kind of look like your, your size, AKA me here, then you'll see that I only use 500 meters and, and that will be for the size small that I provided here. So you can kind of spy on people and realize that if they're making the size that you intend to do, if they were on gauge and didn't change uh, like by adding length or removing length, you'll have a really good idea of how much meterage they used. And sometimes the pattern will tell you, like, you know, they've added 10-15% of yarn estimations, but then real people afterwards said that the estimations were too big and they didn't need all that extra yarn. That can be helpful if you're playing yarn chicken. Something else that can be really helpful is if I don't really have a yarn in mind, but I have a gauge in mind. So for example, I know that with a fingering and a mohair that can give me DK, but I'm gonna remove DK. And I'm just going to say that my gauge, which you can find again here on the left-hand side, you can see gauge by 10 centimeters. I can get basically between a 20 or 21. If you just got a precise gauge, you can even say 21 to 21 and that way It'll show you all the patterns that are made for a 21 stitch gauge. So the No Frill Sweater, the Monday Sweater by Petite Knit. And that can be a really, really helpful way I found to get patterns. If you've already swatched and you already have a swatch that you like, as opposed to finding a pattern and swatching for it and realizing that you're not on gauge. So the pink fizz here, fingering and lace sport yarn. So it's a sport yarn, but she still gets a 21 stitch gauge. So the stitch gauge is more important than the yarn weight, technically. <clears throat> Something that I like to do sometimes if I'm looking for inspiration is I go on patterns and then I go on, let's say, I want to make something in, um, I want to make a sweater and I and it's in my queue, basically, is what I want. So this is gonna be my queue, everything that I've added that I want to be doing in the future. But then now let's say that, again, the meterage, I'm limited because let's say that I want to buy some hand-dyed yarn and I'm gonna buy two skeins. So overall, I'm gonna be getting 800 meters. So again, I, I want to make the most use out of my two skeins. So I'm gonna say 600 to 800 meters. Then now, uh, Ravelry is going to be showing me the projects in my queue that are using between 600 and 800. And then if I wanted to, I could also um, say that it was fingering. And then it shows me four patterns. And there we go. So now I can see, oh, well, the Poet by Sari Nordland, I had already identified that I wanted to make it, <clears throat> hence it being in my queue. And then it tells me here in the um, materials that I only require 
See, and that's what I was saying before. So the larger sizes are gonna need up to 1400, which I don't have. And here, the extra small has 745, which I would have. I wouldn't have enough yarn to make the small, but like I said, I don't mind playing yarn chicken, and I know that sometimes they overestimate how much yarn we need. So what I can do now is if I can go on the project pages that other people have done to see what real people have experienced this, as opposed to just the pattern description, and again, I would say enter a customized range. Let's say that I don't want to see anything that used more than 800. And you can see there's actually quite a lot of projects. There's two pages of projects of people who have done them only using 700 and something. And I'm sure that if I clicked on a lot of them, um, they, they wouldn't have all made the extra small. I'm willing to bet that some people had done a size small but just still needed less yarn. So let's see. They've done a medium and only needed less than 800. They've done a small. Um, they didn't say what size they did. So I hope that this helps you realize the scope of what you can do with the search filters on both the pattern pages of designers, but then also on the project pages and see what other people have, have done. And this really works well for projects that have, for patterns that have a lot of projects. So here on the Tolsta T, you can see there's almost a thousand projects already. You click on advanced and then you can see um, people's helpful notes or most favorites. And again, you can see the range of meters of yarns people have used. So I find that super, super helpful to help me manage my stash and use my leftovers. Something that can be really helpful as well is to search for keywords in this pattern. So let's say, for example, that I was wondering if people had issues like, or like what bind off people used. So I'm gonna type bind off. And then normally here, Ravelry would only show me projects that use the words bind off. So let's see if that worked. Yeah, bind off with size five needles and then they explain how they bound off. That can be really, really helpful if you're stuck on one particular aspect, like a cast on, for example. Or let's say that I was being quite sneaky and I wanted to find I was wondering if, if people found the pattern very easy or difficult. So I could go on another random project, um, The Weekender by Andrew Maori. I'm sure just, yeah, there's a lot of projects. That's crazy. So let's say I'm gonna type difficult. Uh, let's just take one. Well, there's quite a lot of text, so I'm just gonna use the search function of my browser. And here you can say, someone here had a really difficult time getting a neat ribbing on the shelter yarn. And then they make the point again there. So here it's not a problem with the pattern, but you can see that this person struggled with the yarn. So if you were intending to use that yarn for that pattern, that could be a really, really helpful note to have. So. I it's a matter of kind of finding the right keywords to search for. They're, they're not all going to work. Um, maybe you could find the opposite. You could search for easy. And there we go. They're saying an easy peasy stylish knit. And then you have that reassurance that uh, the pattern will be easy. So just, just figure out what you want to search for and then read the notes. I, I could spend hours reading other people's project notes. And add your own. Contribute. Another thing that you can do with patterns, again, just to keep everything linked together, this is already in my favorites, but let's say that I wanted to add it to my queue, then I could add it here. And so um, what I could do is, again, I could say, I could add I could say that I wanted to make it in shelter, like we've just said, but I could also use my stash yarn and that way it would be linked together. And I could see if I have any shelter. So here I'm gonna look, shelter. And it filters, it filters to the yarn weight that the pattern recommends. So here it's worsted, but you can also just put all yarn weights. Uh, and here nothing matches the search. So that means I don't have any shelter. 
but if it says that it's worsted, let's see what I have in my stash that could work for that. And here it's showing me my Cascade, my Gilead, Rios, so that's really helpful. So let's say that I'm going to use this yarn, Walnut Heather. And then I'm going to say here in the notes, because I've already calculated, make size small and careful with ribbing and crop it a bit. And then that way I can save the changes and they'll appear in my queue with those notes saved. And then the other thing that I can do when I'm favoriting it is I can add it to a bundle. So this could be um, a sweater to make in 2023. So I'll show you the bundles that I have right now and you can find them on my profile. If you click on my profile, you click on my favorites, you can see everything that I've favorited. Uh, so every everything. Or if you wanted, you could see my bundles. So I've made a few that I use for myself, but you're like they're public, so you can go see them. So for example, there's camisoles here, and then there's um, projects that I want to make in pure silk. So here's the camisoles, so sleeveless tops that I've highlighted as, as being my, my taste. And then here's the ones I've highlighted would go really well with pure silk. And this is really great. I, I find that so helpful. So if I go on, on someone's project then, um, the June top, it's in my favorites and you just have to click here on, you know, hand dyed yarn or camisoles or remove it from camisoles, etc. and save changes. And then it'll appear in both bundles. So I use bundles a lot to help me um, organize my favorites. I should be doing a better job because right now, as you can see, I have 2000 favorites and um, they're not all organized in my bundles. That's okay. Uh, and yeah, if, you, if, if people advertise themselves as making and creating bundles, then go have a peek at them and that could help you get organized. For example, some people make bundles for uh, gifts, Christmas accessories, etc. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is projects. So here, if I go on my projects, you can see all of them. They're organized by whips at the top here and then finished by time of being finished. And I really like looking at this. Like this is kind of like opening my wardrobe in my closet and seeing all of them. Um, and again, you can use the advanced search here, which is, is really, really helpful. So by default, again, it, it sorts them by most favorites, but we could just organize it by um, recently finished. And if I wanted to just see the sweaters I've made, I'd click on this and then it shows me all my sweaters and cardigans. If I just wanted the cardigans, I'd click on cardigans. And then that's it. As you can see, I have started a few, but I've only really finished three. I should be better at making cardigans. So let's say that I want to see all my sweaters and I wanted to see uh, all the DK ones. Then again, I click on DK and that's it. That's all my DK sweaters. Um, so something that I've started doing recently is using tags on my project and I've been finding that super, super enjoyable and very satisfying to look at. So here's the tags that I've used. Fingering, lamb's wool, raglan, v-neck. So if I click on raglan, this is going to show me all my projects that I've tagged as raglans. And there's quite a lot. This is clearly my favorite sweater construction. How cool is that? And then if I go on this one and I click, I think I've tagged it as stripes. So if you click on that stripes, it's going to show me all my striped items. Oh, this makes me so happy. I, I bet you can tell, but I really, really wish I really hope that you guys are going to be doing that to your own projects and come up with your own tags. It can be so fun. Something else that I think I had tagged my project as was v-neck because I, I don't have that many. Um, but I do really like them. So v-neck and there we go. So quite a lot of chemicals, I guess they're v-neck by default, but like all my cardigans are v-necks. So I'm looking forward to adding some more round necks and then like my vests. So yeah, have a play around with, with those. Uh, another thing that I've been doing as well is marking the gifts, which there's not going to be that many to be honest, but that was a gift for my boyfriend, the single malt. So gift, and then it shows all the things that I've gifted or were gifts. And um, yeah, so that's just so fun. Again, I could spend hours doing that. And I think you can see the tags you have here. If you go in organize. Yeah, 
So you can see all the projects here and you can see all the tags. Um, they're here, the tags that I've done. So for example, if you accidentally wrote um, gift and gifted, they would both show side by side. They're organized by alphabetical order. So if I had 11 gift and like one gifted, I would quickly change the gifted to gift because they mean the same thing and I wouldn't want them to be split. Um, so uh, balloon sleeves, cables is another one that I've organized. You can see there's um, uh, six projects. Acrylic, that was my old project. Cotton. Uh, but what you can also do if you want to see by fibers is if you go on advanced search, there actually is a um, filter for fibers. There we go, fiber type. And this, I mean, this is amazing, right? So let's look at silk. And this is everything that contains silk in my projects. A lot of it was, is going to be mohair or like second strands. So let's see, let's say that I wanted to see all the mohair. I would put silk and mohair. And there we go. This is everything that I've done that has mohair in it at a glance, which is quite a lot. Uh, let's see that I wanted to see all the alpaca. So let's go here. Fiber type. Where is it? There we go fiber alpaca and here's all my alpaca stuff I really really like alpaca what you could do I think as well is not so this one for example I know that it was alpaca and wool so let's say that I want to see all the alpaca that doesn't have wool and those are my projects that are just um, I guess 100% alpaca except that this one also had linen in it but yeah, that's 100% alpaca, that one has cotton, I think that one doesn't, it's just alpaca and brushed alpaca, silk. Okay, yeah, fair enough. So yeah, balloon sleeves, those are my three balloon sleeve sweaters. This is one of my favorite features and I've been having so much fun doing that. I'd highly recommend tagging your projects and then tagging your stash yarn. It's, it's just so helpful. This is all the yarn that I have used in projects. So a lot of it is going to be leftovers, which is quite helpful to get as well at a glance. So there's already some pre-built filters and then you can find your own filters and save them. Okay, um, you can also see in your project uh, the year. So I think if you do index, no. If you, well you could, but if you just go in filter projects by year completed and then like let's say last year those are all the things that I made last year because I always make sure to put start date and finish date here on my projects and I always put the needle the yarn the size etc well actually here I didn't even put a size that's really bad I think it was an extra small or small yeah cast on for size extra small so I'll modify here and actually say that I've made the size extra small because otherwise it's going to bother me. Ta-da! So yeah, it's really helpful to see your items at a glance like that. Okay, so now I'll talk a bit about the social media aspect of Rivalry and the features you can use there. So the community thing here, you can see friends. So if you befriend someone, you can go spy on them, <laughs> which is what I do all the time. Uh, because because I have no life. So uh, what I do most importantly to not get overwhelmed is I only want to see two things from my friends. I want to see the project photos that they upload and then patterns that they queue. Not that they favorite because if they're anything like me they're going to be favoriting 10 projects a day and it's going to be very cluttery. But queuing is like a big deal, it's serious. So the way that you add someone in your friends, you can see a project that they've made, you click on, on that, their name, and then that's their profile. So this is an Italian knitter, she's got a podcast, she's really great, Francesca. And then you can see here, um, for you it would be written add to friends. And this is what I say at the beginning of my videos, if you want to add me as a friend you can do so here. And then you can see her project. You can see her project and that's quite a lot and that's really cool. So if I go on that friend tab, I can see the projects that my friends have added photos to or uh, queued. 
and that's like the activity by default. And then here is just my 84 friends at a glance. Um, so yeah, uh, Handmade by Florence, Abigail Makes Stuff. If you just click on their profiles, you can see their projects. And I, I really like doing that sometimes. If, if I remember that like, a podcaster mentioned something, that's how I can access their page really quickly if they're in my friends. Um, there's not really much else that I do with that tab. I guess it updates on whether they post a new video, which is quite helpful. But mostly I just stay on this page and, and look at new things to get inspiration. The other thing that is quite helpful then is groups and forums. So groups are things that you can join. Here's the 33 groups that I'm a part of. A bunch of them are like local groups, such as Edinburgh groups, UK, or there's designer groups like Sari Nordland, uh, Andrei Maori, and then there's podcast groups such as my own Ravelry podcast group that I've created uh, a couple weeks ago. So it's appearing really small right now. There's something weird with my Chrome tab, but it doesn't matter. So this is the, the main page of my Woolly Worker Knitting podcast group. You can see here there's around 150 members, which is really great. Thank you so much if you've joined. If you haven't, the link is down below. And also um, just simply here, you can click on join group. And yeah, so I've put my links here. I've put the description of the group. Anything that is blue, that means that you can click on and it'll bring you somewhere. And then here's the forum. So I've made an introduction page, general chit chat, and then um, just other little thread that I thought would be useful. So for example, here, if you have something that you'd like to advertise, you can put it here, like a new pattern or a sale you're having in your shop or someone here is sharing their podcast. I was destashing, so I put that in. And it's a way to connect with people. And if I'm making a knit along or a giveaway or a knit night, I'll create a new discussion thread and then you guys can see it. The other thing that I've created in my group is a helpful page. So I've called it master list of resources. And this is just one master list of all very helpful techniques that I found helpful. And I just thought, again, it'd be nice to share them with you. So you can see here, for example, how to start heels on a toe-up sock, like when to start a heel or how to reinforce a heel. And I've said that it's a text or it's a video. So you know what to expect when you click on the link. So you're welcome to go check that out. You can see the members, you can see activity of groups. So if people have posted or queued or, or downloaded, and again, you can put different selections such as project photos or queued patterns. So you could see people that watch The Woolly Worker and who joined the group, you can see what they're up to and what kind of projects they're into. And that's really, really helpful to help like know each other and connect like that. And you can also share your projects with the group. So if you go on a project that you're doing, for example, my penny gloves that I've just finished, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say group, share with a group. And I'm gonna find my thing, the woolly worker, and that's it. I think it automatically did it. So if I go back to my group, yay, I shared it. So go and do that, go share your projects if you want to be featured on that uh, page there. You can also message people, um, obviously like use common sense as to what you should message people about. I always tell people that they're more than welcome to message me if they have questions or comments on things. And um, yeah, it, your messages are over here. I won't be like showing everything, but people, uh, when, when they add you as a friend, it comes here if you have a question. If, you ha if they have an inquiry about your stash. So that's, that's really helpful, just the messaging function. So yeah, I think that's it. I think that was a whistle-stop tour of all the features of Ravelry that I use basically on a daily basis. I use Ravelry as my huge knitting notebook slash database slash social media app, and I could waste spend hours project planning, linking things together, adding tags, adding comments, and making my life easier. And I really thoroughly enjoy it. And I'm sure that if you follow some of the tips here, you will enjoy it too. If it's not your cup of tea, that's completely understandable. And there's nothing to say that you need to be using all of those tips. In fact, um, I wouldn't recommend trying to use all of them like today after watching this video. Definitely ease into it. Otherwise it can be quite overwhelming. You take it slow, you don't need to do it all today. 
uh, you can also definitely ask for help. There's uh, the the support here and like help on on Ravelry. You can see uh, FAQs. There's also some forums that are meant to just be helping with Ravelry. So if you go on forum, uh, normally you're you're already joined in a few groups which are like techniques, patterns, Ravelry, etc. So this one is for the love of Ravelry, and you could post a new thing that uh, is a question. So for example, you could say, I can't find my downloads, like this person. So they created a post asking for it. So it's about asking for help like at the right places, which again, can be overwhelming, but I'll put links below of what the best place is to ask questions on how to use Ravelry in Ravelry so that you don't put it in the wrong place. Um, and yeah, I think like the final note is that like the, the, the more effort you put in, the more you can get out of it. So it's not necessarily all in your face and the most user friendly, I would say, but if you hunt for tips and if you try hard, then you'll be rewarded with all of those really good features. So like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any tips that I haven't mentioned, please, please let them down below. I know that there's a ton more that I want to talk about, but we've already um, spoken for a while and it was quite intense to film this. And if, if there's things that you don't know about that you wish I had covered, then don't hesitate to put the question down below and I'll be preparing a part two of this video. I hope that the format was good for you, where you could see my screen. I hope that the mouse sounds weren't too distracting and that everything was smooth and not too fast. If it was too fast, you're more than welcome to rewatch the video uh, slowed down. You can put that in the settings on YouTube. And if not, like I said, there's lots of places that go into more depth about those topics. This wasn't meant to be an absolute step-by-step -step tutorial, but just more like an overview of what was available. So let me know, do you use Ravelry a lot? Did that video motivate you to hopefully use it more? Um, and also if you haven't joined the Ravelry group, then it would mean a lot if you did. And if we made this little family a little bigger and so that we could organize events and alongs and um, more special plans that are in the pipelines. Hope you're doing well wherever you are and that you're having a joyful knitting experience lately. I'll see you soon for a future podcast episode very soon and until then happy knitting! Bye!